Now bringing the conversation home to Nigeria, the chairman of the Presidential Transition Council and secretary to government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has assured Nigerians that the Buhari administration is committed to a smooth transition process and peaceful handover of power on May 29 to President-elect Aswaju Bola Tinubu. Mustafa said the Transition Council's activities were not affected by those who have gone to the presidential election petition tribunal. Arise News analyst Dayo Shoboale joins us now to discuss the presidential transition plans and the federal government assurance that the court process won't impede power transfer. It's great to have you. Very warm welcome As to always. Newsday. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Now, if we uh, just backtrack uh, a few weeks ago, uh, uh, this particular transition council was a thing of controversy when a few politicians sounded the alarm that uh, they were concerned that there was a group that were being assembled to, uh, to truncate democracy. Uh, do you feel these statements uh, and uh, you know, the progress reports that are giving us, do you feel that they are pacifying these people who had called out uh, rogue, rogue uh, members, uh, rogue individuals inside um, the Asso Villa who are allegedly were working to ensure that a military government would be uh, put into place after the election? I don't want to read motives. It's all people's speculations. The transitional uh, committee was set up to do what it is now assuring people it will do. But you, you should look at uh, the, the excitation or the, the unbelief of those who, who thought the transition would be a transition from Aso Rock to Aso Rock. You should look at the context in which we were there. That was when the new Naira design was introduced. And that was on the eve of the election. And that was why life was difficult for Nigerians. And so people thought uh, a government that wants to go and that is in power and is making life difficult even for a so presidential candidate is not likely to want to go. But uh, thank God, we have had the election. The election is over. People have gone to court. And the obvious is happening. What the... The transition chairman Boss Mustafa has said is to me a clear cut thing. I will even call it a tautology because it's not even necessary. But that's what this transition is meant to be. And they have set up committees. Uh, the uh, president elect has nominated two people to join the committee. And then the Nigerian uh, business, as usual, they say members of the committee will follow them to the World Bank, Gaza. <laughs> Which is what Nigerians leaders love to do. Stay more abroad than finish the business they have to do at all. So this transition is on course. And then again, for those casting doubt or aspersion on the transition, you see, they do not know about the presidential system of government, which is what we practice. You have three centers of power, and they are separate and equal. And there's a system of checks and balances. This is the executive that is in transition now. That's nothing to do with the judiciary. The judiciary is to interpret the constitution and it is going to do that. It is going to do that. The prayer of Nigerians is that it should do justice no matter whose ox is God. Get me? So the legislature, they have started meeting. So our democracy is on course. Despite all the... Uh, all the fears and incitement of both the media and the politicians and those who lost over the quality of the elections. The elections have come and they have gone. The ball is in the court of the courts. So let justice prevail. Mm, definitely. Even uh, you know, President Buhari has said it himself that yeah. come May 29, he's going to be as far away from Abuja as Go possible. But we do know that you know the process of interface is necessary so as to keep Nigerians abreast of you know the developments and to build inclusiveness uh, and lay uh, you know a solid foundation for the transition of power. Do you think that the you know the current uh, transition committee is doing that? Are they keeping Nigerians abreast enough of uh, the happenings? Of course. Uh, they, they said they have set up three committees, inaugural committee, transition documents committee, and uh, security and facilities committee, and they speak for themselves. The inaugural committee will, uh, inauguration committee will take care of the entire exercise of uh, swearing in the president and 
you know, the old president and the Nova Party, the, 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 the transition documents, and over government policies at the state at which they are to the incoming government. And then, of course, security. You know, security is a serious problem in this country. Security is a serious problem. And I hope the new administration makes that its priority, makes that its priority, so that people can feel safe in their homes and they, are, they should not start killing Nigerians like uh, fowl or animals all over the north and all over the country. Yes. Right now, earlier you'd made reference to, uh, I, I know you said it, you know, sort of jokingly that uh, mm. some people will be joining the World Bank extravaganza and yeah. of course some people just prefer to be out of the country mm -hmm. more than they do to be to be within. Of course, we know that the president-elect has traveled uh, for, for ver various reasons. Uh, whatever the reasons may be are irrelevant. Uh, my question to you is how imperative do you think it is for him to be in the country and on the ground as this process unfolds? Is it sending a message that it's going to be business as usual as in the past we have seen similar trends and uh, I know many were looking with expectation that something different would happen this time but it seems to be business as usual. Well, the information I have is that the, uh, the, the government, the incumbent government's delegation will be joined by the president's elect nominees to the World Bank conference. I I'm not what sure if the president will go. No, no, I mean uh, locally at the moment. He's, yes. he's not in Nigeria. The official statement is that he's out of the country yes, while we're going through the transition period. So I'm just saying to you, how important is it Does for it him to be transition? physically on the ground in Nigeria right now as we, so many, so many challenges the nation faces right now. Don't, do you think it's important for a president-elect to be on the ground through this transition process so that they can hit the ground running come May 29th? No, it doesn't need to be in Nigeria in this era of uh, uh, information technology. It does not need to be in Nigeria to monitor what is going on. As of now, I don't know where he is, or unless you give me the information. I don't know who he is, but you know this, this, the style of this administration. You just hear overnight that the president has traveled. Uh, even in more serious times than this, this president has been overseas. You get me? What I'm trying to say about this World Bank, the World Bank uh, conference, an annual events, uh, uh, conference for the financial community. You get me? And it seems that's the first thing that this new uh, incoming government will participate in with the ongoing war. Mm. I mean, yes. you did uh, touch on security earlier, and I'm just reading yes. um, the statement that was put out uh, by Boris Mustafa, uh, talking about the fact that, you know, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the National Intelligence Agency, as part of the transition process, mm -hmm. have already, um, you know, segmented, uh, uh, just give me a second, segmented a four members of the president elect team mm -hmm. that will be joining um, this uh, delegation. Mm -hmm. Now, can you give us um, a bit more information on that? On, on what? So it's talking about the national, uh, the NSA and the fact that, you know, this transition um, on security yes. in itself, yes. following on, um, on what she said, the fact mm -hmm. that he's not on ground and he's supposed to be going through this um, transition in security, in the security uh, aspect of this. Doesn't, isn't that a bit of a, a redundancy uh, if it's not right. security there. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by security? What I mean by security is, you know, uh, the, the insecurity of the entire country. Mm -hmm. You get me? This uh, marauders, uh, armed robbery and things going on in the country. If it is uh, about the security arrangement, I wouldn't know what security arrangement they are making. And they wouldn't tell us what security arrangement for our own safety. They would tell us what it is. Mm. All right, then. Thank you very mm. much for that. Yeah. What impact? I know you've already highlighted, you know, the different uh, presidential system, of course, different arms of government and so forth. 
But we can't ignore the fact that should something, of course, we can't really discuss in detail, but should something uh, eventful happen uh, from these uh, tribunals, uh, the election tribunals we're seeing, that there may be a change in course. Of course, we can't speculate. But uh, should something, should it not be Cetris Paribus? Should something happen? Should an act of God, anything happen? Uh, how do you think it will impact this transition process? Okay, the legal process is on. If it is fast enough before May 29th and they give some decisions, you get me? it may affect the transition. But you know Nigeria, even Mustafa himself has said it, that if they give judgment, he knows people, people will go all the way to the Supreme Court. And given the time span for cases in Nigeria, there is no way they can fast track and give judgment on many of those cases before May 29. But the important thing is for justice to be seen to have been done and to be done expeditiously so that justice is not made expensive in terms of time, time and hopes of Nigeria to have justice done and to have the right person in Asorok. But as, as of now, the main candidate, main resident of Asuro, is Bola Metinu. So we should gear up for that transition. Yes, uh, just to follow up with Tress, what you're saying, I mean, yeah. there are, hasn't been any precedent set for it where even before the inauguration itself was seen, it, um, you know, the petitions won and then, you know, the president elect, uh, you know, the results of the general elections being turned over. But then if we're already seeing, uh, you know, the president-elect being sworn into power, and then there is uh, an issue raised in the, you know, in the petition courts. How will that effect, affect his first uh, hundred, you know, days in office? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get your question. I'm see, wait, see what happened in Osho, right? Mm -hmm. An elected uh, governor, governor was sworn in. The man was defeated. Went to court. You get me? But the, 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 court, you know, the court said the governor was not duly elected. They went to the court of appeal. The court of appeal said the new governor was duly elected. It's the same process. That is the law. Now, you want me to speculate on how the court cases will come out? No, no, necessarily. I will not do that. Sir. Okay, sir. Huh? <laughs> Let's, uh, let's shift our focus from the political transition to the transition of the people in the minds of Nigerians. Yeah. On the ground, do you feel that Nigerians have a transitionary mindset at the moment? Is there a, a, a palpable spirit and feeling? Side, Go for side. it. <laughs> you see, it depends on which side of the fence you are sitting on and what sort of glasses you are using to look at what is on the ground. For the APC, of course. They are looking forward to a successful transition. But to those whose main weapon now is litigation, they are maybe pr probably waiting so, so that May 29 will not come until courts have decided. It is human expectation, disposition. That means some are happy, some are not happy. But then, see, it's not a game of do or die. In the competition, somebody must win. And the winner has emerged. If so facto on the ground for now, so let people leave with that and let the courts do their job. Thank you very much, Mr. Shah.